A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, this message came from the Lord. Thus says the Lord, stand in the court of the house of the Lord and speak to the people of all the cities of Judah who come to worship in the house of the Lord. Whatever I command you, tell them and omit nothing. Perhaps they will listen and turn back, each from his evil way, so that I may repent of the evil I have planned to inflict upon them for their evil deeds. Say to them, thus says the Lord, if you disobey me, not living according to the law, I place before you, not listening to the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I send you constantly, though you do not obey them. I will treat this house like Shiloh, and make this city to which all the nations of the earth shall refer when cursing another. (coughs) Now the priests, the prophets, and all the people heard Jeremiah speak these words in the house of the Lord. When Jeremiah finished speaking, all that the Lord bade him speak to all the people, the priests and prophets, laid hold of him, crying, You must be put to death. Why do you prophesy in the name of the Lord? This house shall be like Shiloh, and the city shall be desolate and deserted. And all the people gathered about Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. Verbum Domini Lord, in your great love, answer me. Those outnumber the hairs of my head who hate me without cause. Too many for my strength are they who wrongfully are my enemies. Must I restore what I did not steal? Since for your sake I bear insult, and shame covers my face, I have become an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my mother's sons, because zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who blaspheme you fall upon me. But I pray to you, O Lord, for the time of your favor, O God, and your great kindness answer me, with your constant help. Dominus Fobiscum, et Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Matthäum, Jesus came to his native place and taught the people in their synagogue. They were astonished and said, Where did this man get such wisdom and mighty deeds? Is he not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother named Mary, and his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Are not his sisters all with us? 
Where did this man get all this? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his native place and in his own house. And he did not work many mighty deeds there because of their lack of faith. Verbum Domini. Our Lord is rejected in his own hometown in the gospel today. One might think that this is where he would find at least some comfort. It's where he grew up. As we hear in the beginning of St. John's Gospel, he came to his own home and his own people received him not. He came to bestow his own divine life, his own love upon us, and yet he meets rejection. And at first, when he began teaching in the synagogue, the people reacted with astonishment at the wisdom and the power of his words, but it quickly changed. The Nazarenes couldn't grasp that this man who they saw grow up in their very midst could possess such wisdom and mighty deeds. There was no way in their minds that he could be the savior of the world. They thought they knew him. Where did this man get such wisdom and mighty deeds? Where did this man get all this? In today's gospel also tells us that they took offense at him. He was a stumbling block to them. One commentator says that in Jesus, God has generously made himself all too familiar, has come too close to the Nazarenes for their comfort. They were so sure of themselves, they they thought they knew who he was, that they became blind to the truth. It would have been much easier for them to believe and also to accept a Savior who was far away, one whom they are not so familiar with. And we can examine our own lives and ask if we allow the ordinariness of Jesus' action to work in our daily lives. Are we conscious of it? Or do we only see the Lord working in our lives when something big happens, something miraculous, or when our prayers are answered favorably? No, God is always involved in our daily lives. Just as the Nazarenes were uncomfortable with God's desire to be so close and familiar with him, we likewise can fall into that. Again, it's been observed that the Nazarenes, and we along with them at times, simply cannot believe that God loves us so much as to want to share all our life with him and all of his life with us from inside the concreteness of day-to-day living. God desires to be with us, and he is with us in the ordinariness, again, of our daily lives. I remember it wasn't too long ago that Pope Francis reminded us, he said it's very difficult to allow God to love us. Again, we want to do all the action. We want to do, make all the effort. But simply to sit there and allow him to love us, he desires to be part of our lives. We also celebrate today the memorial of St. Alphonsus Liguori. He founded the Congregation of the Most Holy Redeemer, which is also known as the Redemptorists, in 1732. This great doctor and saint of the church is recognized as a patron of moral theologians and confessors, and he had a great impact in the field of moral theology. And when he developed his own method, he balanced the more rigorous scriptural quotations, like many are called but few are chosen, with those of a more merciful tone such as the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Again, he saw the fullness of the gospel, the full picture. It's difficult, it's challenging, and yet God invites all of us to a deep and lasting friendship and relationship with him. It was also St. Alphonsus' desire for the good of souls and to help priests function as good confessors that that actually inspired him to write a book on moral theology as he saw that other books at that time were either too rigid or they were too lax. Again, he sought the middle, the balance, and he put a lot of effort into this. In fact, his book was about 4,000 pages long, and he consulted over 800 authors when he was writing this. It was very thorough, but he knew it was for a great good. 
Again, it was the salvation of souls that motivated him. And he had seen from personal experience in his day how the rigorism was not helping one to grow in holiness. Again, he sought a balance. St. Alphonsus would state that when a sinner acknowledges his sins and despises them, he must not be left alone to fight against temptation. He must be helped. And the best help is the grace of the sacraments. Again, this is God's channel of grace to our souls to strengthen us, to nourish us, to heal us, the sacraments. And he tried everything he could to make readily available the sacrament of confession. He knew it was a very effective means of taking away sin. And he did not desire to drive people away from it. And to priests, he stressed kindness in the confessional as well, especially toward those more entrenched in sin, in order to more easily win the soul to repentance, to snatch it from the devil, and to bring it into the arms of Jesus Christ. And besides being kind, he also exhorted confessors to develop a good knowledge of moral theology and to be patient with the penitents when they come. And we see the patience that he exhibited in his life as he had a great saying or expression when someone angered him or disturbed him. And that was, God make you a saint. May God make you a saint. So as we prayed in the collect at the beginning of Mass today, we asked that God might help us to follow closely in the footsteps of St. Alphonsus Liguori, especially in his zeal for souls, that we might do all we can to help lead others closer to Christ and to his church.